I'll start by explaining who we are and all of that. My name is Ed Zipko. I'm the director and co-founder of Super Chief Gallery NFT. We've been a gallery for 10 years, and then because we showed digital native artwork in 2016, we were a little bit more inside and saw the opportunity to really dive into Web3 and NFTs. So with that, we opened the world's first NFT gallery last year in March. We beat Shanghai by one day to be the first one on the planet and basically applied all of those opportunities to our, you know, our art community and our art base. Um, since opening, I'm really proud to say that we've done the first ever IRL events for OpenSea, Maker's Place, Foundation, um, Object on Tezos, um, the United Nations, the UNICEF. Um, really proud to have worked with a lot of really great opportunities to kind of show NFT artwork and raise this underground community up to finally being accepted in the art world and beyond. So through that and through these opportunities, I've been able to be in a few rooms and a lot of, a lot of the conversation has been how do we scale how do we bring on the next 100 million people to Web3? And how do you do, how do you also deal with the issue that this is a very, uh, there's a scenario that we've got in the industry where it's a lot, of, a lot of white people in a room talking about what's going on. And we feel really strongly that the moment is now to, both onboard the next 100 million people and deal with that issue in one strike. And I think the goal of this is education. So the best way we can onboard the next 100 million people is by giving the people that are coming in for education a good experience. God, I'm fucking, all right. <laughs> hey, everybody. So. If we're gonna onboard the next 100 million people, we're gonna to have to attack it from a thousand different directions because there's a thousand different types of people. So if we're talking about how to do that and how to solve the issue of diversity and underrepresented communities being in the room, we should build an educational system from the ground up that's focused with that intent. So rather than sharing uh, access to this community and this education, just as a broad stroke, because we need education, I think it's a lot more important to be dividing up the goals of this through the week. And basically, we've been provided an opportunity to open up our new gallery location at the Oculus Center at World Trade Center. It's an incredible opportunity. We feel like the most important thing we can do with that is to focus on daytime educational programming and evening exhibitions for our artists. The idea of doing daytime educational programming and opening up the community that travels through the Oculus each day, there's, if we're having the conversation about how to onboard 100 million people, it's about exposing them to what we're talking about and the best, uh... all right, all right. <laughs> All right, so with this intent, the idea is there's 300,000 people that go through the Oculus every day. If we do the math, that's over 2 million a week. That's over 100 million in the first year. So if we're trying to take this opportunity and make the most of it, the goal is really to be focusing on providing early adoption to the communities that we all want to have participate. We all know the value of early adoption. We all recognize that whoever's coming in and learning the best practices is going to have the positive experiences. They can share that with their community, and there's no type of market penetration that comes like hearing it from a friend who's had a positive experience. They can guide the rest of their community through it. And what we've been really good at is finding opportunities and sharing those with the right people. So with that intent, we're basically looking at seven days a week that we're going to break up uh, to try and serve each of the communities that really could benefit from this opportunity. So 
Monday, we're specifically going for BIPOC. Tuesday is native language speakers, so they can learn in their native language. You don't have to learn English to learn Web3. Wednesday is about dealing with the fact that it's a primarily male industry right now, and if we can focus education on non-male identifying people, we can be bringing in groups that have felt marginalized because they've been marginalized. Um, Thursday, we're focusing on programming and coding for those communities. So if they'd like to have a focus with that kind of education, that's the day for that. Friday, we're focusing on artists and the art community because not only from those communities, but the art community at large in New York to start. Saturday, we're doing collecting because we want to be attacking this from every angle for the communities that have been traditionally boxed out and having them learn best practices. Saturday, um, sorry, Saturday's collectors. Sunday, we're breaking in half. The early half of the day is for Gen Z and beyond and with a focus on the metaverse because that's the generation that's going to be living within the metaverse. So we want to make sure that they're having access and learning, again, best practices for all this stuff. And then the second half of Sunday is uh, anybody who's feeling left behind with all of the advances in technology and they're over 40, and we're calling it analog. The concept here is that we're not experts in any of these communities. We are, we're curators, we're artists ourselves, we've just been in the right place in the right time a thousand fucking times in a row, and we really want to be able to share that with people that don't have access because that's how this grows and survives. If it's just a bunch of white people in a room, it's going to become septic. It's not going to grow in the way that we want this to be global. It's not going to be able to be serving the communities that make this all worthwhile. So the goal of this is to take the opportunity we have, um, provide that opportunity to these communities themselves to run their days as really dialing in on what the needs are of their community with this framework. Because I think through an advisory council, we can do this in a way that isn't one person's opinion on what might help each of these groups, but actually empowering them to take ownership of that day and help us build this in a way that makes sense. So I've got seven minutes left, basically. I can open it up for questions and let people know what we're talking about. Yeah. Don't rest, that's why I blew the first half of this. Yeah, I'm exhausted. Seven days a week. Oh, staffing. Seven days a week is about, it's uh, through a group. Yeah, the goal of this is to have it be overlapping uh, management. We really want to make it so each of these days has their own team, their own teacher who's riding it that day through the week, or uh, excuse me, through the series. The goal is to have eight to 10 weeks of programming and then have it like cycle. Yeah. But yeah, nobody's, I don't rest. Yeah. Uh, are these marginalized communities globally or just in the United States? The idea is to start it as a pilot program um, and focus it in New York to start. We have a gallery that's in Los Angeles as well, and it's a 9,000 square foot NFT gallery. So we have got space to do educational programming there. And then the second, it's like, so pilot programs in New York, it expands to Los Angeles. The quick outgrowth that we're hoping from there is that we could be providing educational programming that syncs up with the larger conferences and festivals because there's so much access to talent and people that could speak to each of these subjects and groups to make it so there's a traveling educational aspect as well. The, uh, from the ground up, we're building it with streaming in mind so we can be sharing the content online. We're really focusing right now on bringing the advisory council together. I'm really proud of the people that are already involved with it. Um, but I want to make sure that we're focused on how it can grow, focused how it can be done transparently and built transparently. Um, and I really want it to be, more than anything, I want this to be a learn to earn model. I want the people that are you know, coming from these communities to have a real tangible result when they leave that first, uh, maybe not the first class, but that first series, I really think it's important that they can have a tangible takeaway. And the goal is I'd love to be able to pay at least a month of someone's rent. If they're gonna be putting the time in, if they're gonna be, there's so many aspects of it that add value to the people that are coming in and participating. One being like, 
really, if you can bring 40 people together and show them that they're part of a community that can exist on Twitter and online and get behind each other, at this stage of the game, that's a lot. Like, I think with artists, if they understand they're part of a network that can champion each other and beyond artists, but, you know, the community at large, I don't want to... I don't want to shoehorn this or be too focused on one aspect of it. I really want the advisory council to be leading the charge in what the needs are of that community. And then we focus all the access that we have to different groups uh, and speakers and whatnot and just connect a lot of dots. But eventually globally, shit, yeah. I mean, the goal is global. Where's the site in LA? Um, the site in LA is downtown LA. We're just off the 10. We're a mile away from the crypto.com arena. It's uh, 1965 South Los Angeles Street. Thanks everybody for the patience and letting me stutter through the beginning of this. I appreciate it a lot. Hi, so my question is, so I am Gen Z and then I also am female identifying, but yeah. let's say I miss those days in particular during the week and I come on like an analog day with people over 40, is that like all right? So I was just curious if it was like. We're gonna try to allow people that fit within any of the groups to participate on any of the days that they feel is appropriate for them. Um, I'm trying to keep it where it's, I don't wanna do it through walk-ins. I really want this to be groups that are kind of formed from each community and I want to do like internal outreach in that way. But I do really want this to be something that allows for a fluidity through the week for as many boxes as you check that you'd like to learn about. That's really, it's about bringing a community together and providing access. Yep, totally. Anybody else? I may have missed this. I came in totally. a little late, but when are you starting up in the Oculus? Um, we're finishing up all of our paperwork as we speak. So it should be doors open in two weeks, God bless. And then we'll be kind of building it from there. It's a lot of, uh, a lot of my priority is once we've set the location up is hosting these different communities and these different like advisory council relationships. Like the advisory council has been picked because they have strong ties to these communities. And I want to make sure that they occupy the space, get a feel for it, and then build it organically from the ground up for the pilot program specifically. So um, we're going to be aiming, I'm going to get a lot of feedback, I'm certain, from the different communities on what actually works for them. Just being real about like what we're going to be dealing with. It's like many different backgrounds, many different economic situations. So I want to make sure that we can kind of stay fluid for everybody. But in the short term, I'm defining it as 12 p.m. to 5 p.m., where the first hour is kind of just like a meet and greet time to kind of connect. The second two hours from 1 to 3 p.m. is like actually education with guest speakers that are zooming in and also visiting IRL. And then from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. is kind of like office hours for the people that have been coming in to speak. It's more one-on-one -on -one and like small groups. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you have a sponsor for the program? Yes, we are actively bringing on as many sponsors who want to support this as we can, as well as getting involved with, you know, really the curriculum. I really want there to be a, a, a strong back and forth between the industry itself the leaders and thought leaders of this industry and these communities. Because something that's really important with all of it is like access. You know, this isn't like somebody going on YouTube, which is awesome and we will be streaming and we do need that. But the real gift that we can give to these communities is a real conversation and a face-to-face -face access. Like that level of, uh, that level of access has changed my life in the last year. It's what we're directly trying to share with each of these communities. So yes for sponsorship, yes for our deck. Um, it's, it's a little bit, it was a little too loose for me to put up here and feel like I wasn't going to be talking at a school about something. So at the last minute I was like, no deck. But we've been really, we've had four months of conversations with Consensus and MetaMask um, to come in at a high level. We're really, really proud that we've been able to have these conversations. Um, it, it's not done and the check hasn't cleared yet, you know, but like we're the amount of talks that we have with them and how passionate they've been about it. It's like, it seems 
very much um, that we're helping to answer a need that you know everyone has said for the last year and a half that we've been involved, this is something we care about. This is something that's really important to the growth and the integrity of what we're trying to do. And I kind of got it in my head as well that like it's a really important aspect to continue the ethos and building into people's awareness of all this about the ethos of why Web3, why blockchain. So yeah. Cool. My clock's done. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate it.